P450 enzymes are actually incredibly high yield for USMLE and Comlex. I want to start this video by talking about the different P450 inducers and inhibitors. I'll list all the drugs, explain the pathophysiology of what happens to affect drug metabolism, and then we'll wrap up the video by talking about the specific subtypes of the P450 receptors, which has become a very annoying topic to memorize. Of course, I'll give you my mnemonics along the way as we go through the normal physiology, and we'll wrap up by doing a summary of everything that you need to know. So when we talk about P450 enzymes, it's probably best to start by talking about certain drugs that act on the enzymes. Now, certain drugs can either be inducers of P450 or they can be inhibitors of P450. So we're not talking about the enzyme itself, right? I'm not saying that the P450 enzyme is the inducer or is the inhibitor. What I'm actually saying is that certain drugs induce P450 or certain drugs inhibit P450. So let's start by listing out the drugs that act as inducers of P450 enzymes. Those drugs are seen here. Carbamazepine, rifampin, alcohol, phenytoin, grisofulvin, phenobarbital, and sulfonylurea. So all of these drugs are P450 enzyme inducers. So what does that actually mean? Well, let's talk about the normal physiology and pharm pharmacology here. So normally you have this drug and the drug over time interacts with a P450 enzyme. So under normal circumstances that over time you take the drug and eventually the drug needs to be broken down. So when the drug is reaching its half-life and starting to be metabolized, that P450 enzyme will work its way toward the drug, will latch onto the drug, and then will basically destroy the drug by metabolizing it. And this is all a normal process. Drugs have to be eliminated and metabolized by our body, and that's done by enzymes. So that drug disappears, and you're left with the P450 enzyme, which th can then go and find other molecules in the body to keep on breaking down. Um, so that is the P450 system. Now let's go back to this slide. What happens when you put a inducer of P450 into the equation. So the inducer is shown here in green. So this could be any one of those drugs that we just listed, right? Carbamazepine, rifampin, alcohol, phenytoin, grisofulvin, uh, phenobarbital, or sulfonylureas. Any one of those drugs, if you take them, will have an effect on P450's ability to metabolize other drugs. So what this does is it speeds up this process because it's an inducer of P450. So when P450 isn't around to normally metabolize these drugs, but you take an inducer of P450, so you take one of those other drugs that I listed on, on the previous slide, P450 shows up faster and accelerates toward the drug, metabolizes the drug, and destroys the drug. So what I'm saying here is that a P450 enzyme actually induces P450 to, or excuse me, a P450 inducer induces P450 as the name suggests. So usually the enzyme is not going to metabolize the drug until later on in the day, let's say. But when you take an inducer, you make P450 show up faster, metabolize the drug faster, and get rid of some other drug faster. So inducers of P450, in a nutshell here, they increase drug metabolism. So you have to be careful because if you're taking some other medication and all of a sudden you start taking, in addition to that other medication, you start taking something like phenytoin. Phenytoin induces P450, which breaks down that other medication that you normally take, and therefore that other medication doesn't do its job because it's getting broken down early because you're inducing P450 to break down that other drug. So that's how the P450 inducers work. Now let's switch gears and talk about the P450 inhibitors. So I listed them out here for you. Valproic acid, aka valproate, ketoconazole, isoniazid, sulfonamides, chloramphenicol, amiodarone, erythromycin, and I want to say with erythromycin, it's, it's really all of the macrolides with the exception of azithromycin. Uh, quinidine and grapefruit juice. So let's talk about the, the pharmacology and the physiology of the inhibitors. So again, normally you have some other drug in, in your body that you normally take. Over time, it needs to get broken down. It'll go through its normal half-life. It'll get metabolized. The P450 enzyme will associate with the drug. It will metabolize the drug and the drug will be broken down. But what happens when you introduce a second drug, aka a P450 inducer. So shown here in red is our P450 inhibitor. Excuse me, I said inducer, but I meant to say inhibitor. So the P450 inhibitor, which is any one of those drugs that I just listed on the previous slide, 
inhibits P450. So normally P450 wants to go and metabolize the drug, but a P450 inhibitor will inhibit the P450 enzyme. So it literally sits right on top of the enzyme and prevents it from doing its job. That enzyme goes away. And instead of normally metabolizing the other drug shown in blue on this slide, that other drug shown in blue will actually have a super therapeutic effect or a super therapeutic effect because the P450 inhibitor is inhibiting the enzyme that normally breaks down the other drug. So this will decrease drug, me drug metabolism. And basically this can cause toxicity or buildup of the drug that needs to be normally broken down. So P450 inhibitors cause drug toxicity by building up drug effects because they decrease drug metabolism and P450 inducers do not cause drug toxicity, but they cause a subtherapeutic effect because they increase drug metabolism and therefore there's no drug around to actually carry out its effect. So those are the differences, the big picture differences between the inducers and the inhibitors. What's really important for you when you're taking USMLE and Comlex is to know which drugs are inducers and which drugs are inhibitors. Now, of course, this is a very long list and there's no easy way to memorize this. Oh, but there is. I'm going to give you my mnemonic to remember the P450 inducers. So if you look at the first letter here, I've bolded them and put them in red. The mnemonic is crap GPS induces my rage. So I don't know if you guys remember before iPhones had the GPS on them, everybody used to use like their Garmin or their TomTom. -tom. They used the GPS, but if you were ever driving with your GPS and it couldn't calculate the map fast enough or was just buffering, that was the most rage inducing thing of my life. I hated that. So crap GPS, C-R-A-P GPS, co corresponds to the letters of the drugs that are inducers. So they induce my rage. If you can look at this list and know what the inducers are, then by process of elimination, you'll know what the inhibitors are. So I never, ever memorized the inhibitors, but I just memorized the inducers using my mnemonic. And then on test day, if I got some question where it was very clear they were asking me about either an inhibitor or an inducer, if it wasn't one of the crap GPS drugs, then I knew it was an inhibitor. And therefore, I knew it was inhibiting P450. And, you know, I would work that out in my head to figure out what the answer was. But you, you literally cannot go wrong if you know this mnemonic. So crap GPS induces my rage. Carbamazepine, rifampin, alcohol, phenytoin, grisofulvin, fetobarb, and sulfonylureas, they all induce P450, which means P450 shows up and breaks down the other drugs faster, so the other drugs don't have as big of an effect. That's all of the induction. And then in inhibition of P450 is just the complete opposite, and you'll know those drugs by process of elimination. So what I would say is take some time to just stare at this slide and know what the inhibitors are. So know that ketoconazole and valproate and sulfonamides and chloramphenicol are either inducers or inhibitors. And then if you get a question in your head, use the crap GPS induces my rage mnemonic to figure out which one it is and just use process of elimination. I've done this my whole life in medicine and it's never been a problem for me. So this is how I suggest you attack these questions. They're really, really high yield questions and this will help you out big time. So now we're gonna talk about the actual subtypes of the P450 enzyme system. So. In recent years on USMLE and Comlex, they've started to ask you about these subtypes, which sucks because like, look at these things. It's CYP1A2, CYP2E3, 2C9, 2D6, 3A4, and what drugs these specific subtypes actually metabolize. So there was really no easy way to do this. And when I was a medical student, uh, what I did was I came up with mnemonics for these because I didn't want to lose these points on test day because as, as stupid as the question is, it's still free points if you take a little bit of time and come up with some beautiful mnemonics. So let's start by talking about these one at a time. We'll go just top down. Uh, first, I'll tell you the drug that the subtype metabolizes and then I'll give you a beautiful mnemonic to remember it so you get free points on test day. So CYP1A2 metabolizes acetaminophen, aka Tylenol. So the way that I remember this is I rewrite the word acetaminophen and I capitalize the A's, so as acetaminophen, and this is one word with two A's, aka 1A2. One word with two A's, aka 1A2, so 1A2 acetaminophen. Um, the mnemonic for a lot of these is just reorganizing the mnemonic with the letters and the numbers. So acetaminophen is one big word with two A's, aka 1A2. So CYP1A2 is a P450 subtype that metabolizes acetaminophen. Pretty easy, right? That took, what, 30 seconds? And now you have a free point on test day. All right, uh, CYP2E3, this metabolizes ethanol, aka alcohol. So this one's super easy, guys. You have to be 21 to drink eth ethanol. So 2, 1, and the E, we just reorganize that into 2E1. 
So you have to be 21 to drink uh, ethanol, aka alcohol. So that's 2E1. So the 2E1 subtype metabolizes alcohol. We are about 60 seconds in and you've already got two free points on test day, which means you can match whatever specialty you want because you're learning things that your colleagues are not. So let's keep this rolling. Uh, CYP2C9, this is going to metabolize warfarin, aka Coumadin. So like the prototypical blood thinner that's used in the hospital. Uh, how do we remember this? So this, this is a kind of like a two-part mnemonic. So part of this requires your knowledge of knowing which um, factors Coumadin and Warfarin act on. So if, if you recall, Warfarin, aka Coumadin, acts on factors 2, 7, 9, 10, protein C, and protein S. And how this mnemonic works is you just go every other factor in order, you put an arrow at them, and we've got the Warfarin factors. And is it any coincidence that 2,9C, aka 2C9, is the subtype of the P450 system we're talking about. So you list out the factors that warfarin acts on, you pick every other factor in ascending order, and you rearrange them. So instead of 2,9-C, it's 2C9. So CYP2C9 affects warfarin factors 2C and 9, aka it metabolizes warfarin. So we're rolling. Easy, right guys? You're getting free points, let's keep going. Uh, CYP2D6 is going to metabolize your cardiovascular drug. So I'm just going to keep this really broad to help you. If you're on your test and I ask you a question about which subtype uh, metabolizes which drug and the drug is a cardiovascular drug, pick 2D6. Just It's just worth the guess because most of the time you're going to be right. So how do you remember this? Well, an echocardiogram is also known as a 2D echo. So the only subtype receptor with 2D in the name is 2D6. So therefore, CYP2D6 is going to be your metabolizer of cardiovascular drugs, aka 2D echo is our mnemonic. So 2D echo for 2D6. 2D echo reminds us of an echocardiogram, which of course is a cardio, you know, cardiology thing. So cardiovascular drugs are metabolized by 2D6. We're going to wrap up with 3A4. This one, there's really no mnemonic for it because 3A4 is the most ubiquitous P450 subtype. So if you have a drug, that's not acetaminophen, that's not alcohol, that's not warfarin, and that's not a cardiovascular drug, you guess 3A4 because it's the most common. It's like, I think it metabolizes up to something like 60% of all of the, the drugs. So if it's not one of the first four that fits the first four mnemonic by process of elimination, you guess 3A4 and you're going to be right 60% of the time. So guys, that's it. That's the P450 enzyme subtypes. We've talked about them here, 1A2, 2E3, 2C9, 2D6, and 3A4. Four beautiful sexy mnemonics. We talked about P450 inhibitors and P450 inducers. Remember, when we say inhibitor, we're talking about what the drug does to the enzyme. So an inhibitor of P450 will block P450. Therefore, P450 cannot go on to break down other drugs, and therefore other drugs will build up. P450 inducers will induce P450, aka it'll be like, yo, P450, come on, bro, I need you around here and then it'll show up and P450 will go on to break down other drugs inappropriately so other drugs will have a sub-therapeutic effect. That's the summary. I really hope that this was useful. Remember, P450 is really high yield, so spend some time with this video, watch it once or twice, and let me know in the comment section if this was helpful for you.